the fundamental physical laws governing the forces acting upon an aircraft in flight were adopted from theories that grew out of the scientific revolution which began in europe in the sixteen hundreds one of the best-known scientists and mathematicians of the time was sir isaac newton who not only formulated the law of gravity but also formulated the three basic laws of motion newton's first law of motion states every object persists in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed on it or more simply an object in motion remains in motion and an object at rest remains at rest unless an outside force acts on the object to either stop its motion or start motion. This means that nothing starts or stops moving until some outside force causes it to do so. An aircraft at rest on the ramp remains at rest unless a force strong enough to overcome its inertia is applied. Once it's moving, its inertia keeps it moving, subject to the various other forces acting on it. These forces may add to its motion, slow it down, or change its direction. Newton's second law states, force is equal to the change in momentum per change in time. For a constant mass, force equals mass times acceleration. When a body is acted upon by a constant force, its resulting acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the body and is directly proportional to the applied force. This takes into account the factors involved in overcoming Newton's first law. It covers both changes in direction and speed, including starting from rest, or positive acceleration, and coming to a stop, which is called negative acceleration, or deceleration. Finally, Newton's third law of motion is one of the most well-known. It says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In an airplane, the propeller moves and pushes back the air. Consequently, the air pushes the propeller and thus the airplane in the opposite direction, which is forward. In a jet airplane, the engine pushes a blast of hot gases backward. The force of equal and opposite reaction pushes against the engine and forces the airplane forward. In 1852, German physicist and chemist Heinrich Gustav Magnus experimented with aerodynamic forces acting on spinning spheres and cylinders. These experiments led to the discovery of the Magnus effect, which helps explain the theory of lift. If air flows against a cylinder that is not rotating, the flow of air above and below the cylinder is identical and the forces are the same. If the cylinder is rotated and observed from the side while immersed in a fluid, the rotation of the cylinder affects the fluid surrounding the cylinder. The flow around the rotating cylinder differs from the flow around a stationary cylinder due to resistance caused by two factors, viscosity and friction. Viscosity is the property of a fluid that causes it to resist flowing. High viscosity fluids resist flow, low viscosity fluids flow easily. Friction is the second factor affecting fluid flowing around a rotating cylinder. Friction is the resistance one surface or object encounters when moving over another, and exists between a fluid and the surface over which it flows. It's important to remember that all surfaces, no matter how smooth they appear, are not smooth and impede the flow of fluid to some extent. Both the surface of a wing and the rotating cylinder have a certain roughness, albeit at a microscopic level, causing resistance to fluid flow. This reduction in the velocity of airflow about a surface is caused by skin friction or drag. When passing over a surface, molecules actually adhere or stick to the surface. Thus, in the case of the rotating cylinder, air particles near the surface that resist motion have a relative velocity near zero. The roughness of the surface impedes their motion. Due to the viscosity of the fluid, the molecules on the surface entrain 
or pull the surrounding flow above it in the direction of the rotation due to the adhesion of the fluid to itself. The molecules at the surface of the rotating cylinder do not move relative to the cylinder. They move clockwise with the cylinder. Due to viscosity, these molecules entrain others above them, resulting in an increase in fluid flow in the clockwise direction. Now substituting air for other fluids results in a higher velocity of air movement above the cylinder simply because more molecules are moving in a clockwise direction. Now when a cylinder rotates in a fluid that is also moving, the result is a higher circulatory flow in the direction of the rotating cylinder. By adding fluid motion, the magnitude of the flow increases. The highest differences of velocity are 90 degrees from the relative motion between the cylinder and the airflow. Additionally, a stagnation point exists where the airstream impacts the front of the airfoil surface and splits. Some air goes over and some air goes under. Another stagnation point exists where the two airstreams rejoin and resume at identical velocities. When viewed from the side, an upwash is created ahead of the airfoil and a downwash at the rear. The highest velocity is at the top of the airfoil with the lowest velocity at the bottom. This concept can be readily applied to a wing or other lifting surface. Because there is a difference of velocity above and below the wing, the result is a higher pressure at the bottom of the wing and a lower pressure on the top of the wing. The low pressure area produces an upward force known as the Magnus effect, the physical phenomenon whereby an object's rotation affects its path through a fluid, to include air. Fifty years after Newton formulated his laws of motion, Daniel Bernoulli, a Swiss mathematician, explained how the pressure of a moving fluid varies with its speed. Bernoulli's principle states that as the velocity of a moving fluid increases, the pressure within the fluid decreases. This principle explains what happens to air passing over the curved top of the airplane wing. A practical application of Bernoulli's principle is the Venturi tube. The Venturi tube has an air inlet that narrows to a throat or constriction point and an outlet section that increases in diameter toward the rear. The diameter of the outlet is the same as that of the inlet. At the throat, the airflow speeds up and the pressure decreases. At the outlet, the airflow slows down and the pressure increases. Since air is recognized as a fluid-like substance, it is accepted that it must follow the above laws. Using these laws, it's easy to start to see how a wing produces lift. As the wing moves through the air, the flow of air across the curved top surface increases in velocity, creating a low pressure area and the slower air on the bottom creates a higher pressure area.